Well, good morning, guys. Last night I had broken down and we got rained out, so we had to call it an early day. But I'm taking this time, as I'm waiting, as a perfect moment to explain one of these units to you. So this unit starts up here with the snout. This is where the crop gets fed in to the spindles. And this is all that you see whenever it's closed up and running order. And then those spindles are spinning around like this. And then each spindle is spinning like this. There's two drums. There's a front drum, which is in here. And then the back drum, which is in here. It's behind this shield. So it all starts with this spindle. As I said, there is 16 bars with 24 spindles on each bar. And this drum spins like this. And these spindles spin around like this. And as that cotton goes through, there's little barbs on these spindles, which snags the cotton and pulls it out of the burr and hauls it around to the dolfer column. Now this dolfer column, there's just a hairline gap between each spindle and the dolfer. And this dolfer spins in a circle. And what it does is it takes the cotton, knocking it off the spindle and drops it down to the bottom of the cabinet. This job is to clean the spindles off and get the cotton from the spindle to the air duct, which blows it up in the back. And as that comes around, inside here is called your moisture pads. Now these moisture pads, this is what I was talking where the solution water gets pumped through. It rubs on top of all the spindles. And these spindles get cleaned by this, allowing them to, I guess, get moisturized. With the dry spindle, the cotton wraps up tight. I think I actually had some wrap on this. I'll have to look to see if I have any wrap to show you guys what a wrap looks like. But having a wet spindle creates a non-stick surface so the cotton does not wrap tight and it'll actually get pulled off. So this gets pumped full of water on the bottoms and as these spindles go by, it rubs the solution onto them, making them moisturize. It happens every time they go around, with a dry spindle, it causes wrap. With this moisturized spindle, no problems. So once the cotton falls out of this dolfer pad, hits the cabinet, there's an air duct here and an air duct here, which blows that air, pushing the cotton back into the air chute or the cotton chute. And then that chute goes up to the top to the accumulator. So that is basically the gist of what each cabinet looks like. There's six cabinets two drums in each cabinet two moisture pads in each cabinet two dolfer columns in each cabinet um, each unit is the same these are the automated height sensors they rub on the ground that way the, the picker knows how tall uh, each section is they're moved individually that's where the split point is for both of them and then this is the row sense that i was talking about as it goes that cotton pushes each fin sideways that way the picker knows when to keep it straight or when to turn to make that row straight inside each cabinet so that's basically all that's going on with the head um the engine compartment is actually below the picker and combines are in the back engine compartment and the picker is on the bottom that way to make so it can make room for the accumulator and the baler this is the accumulator it goes from up top all the way down to the bottom um from the head it gets shot up the air ducts into the accumulator that's where it stores the loose cotton before it's bailed um at the bottom there's this like a hole with a conveyor belt running out that way the cotton goes from the accumulator into the bottom of the baler where it's bailed and then once the sensor hits 94 inches it'll wrap it once it starts wrapping there's rolls on the back it'll hold five rolls one in the chamber four up top and then they'll get siphoned down as i run out um, then it'll wrap it and then once it's done wrapping this handler will come down and the baler will open up and eject the bale onto the handler which it'll ride down here probably like right here and then i get to decide when i want to drop the bale now most of the time we try to carry them this is a pit cotton field right here you can see the bales there you can see the bales here we try to carry them to the end as close as possible so our handler doesn't have to keep working across the field to pick the bales up and stack them now we stack them in groups of four why do we stack them in groups of four a module truck which is the truck that takes this cotton already picked and baled to the gin it holds four bales we used to do or they used to do square modules big 
huge modules. Um, but this is the Baylor style picker. It's a newer technology. So they're shifting from those square modules back to these round bales. These are super easy, super simple, less mess. You get more cotton out of the field because it is a cleaner process than the square modules. Once they're stacked in groups of four, they're tagged, rode on to identify the owner of the cotton. And then the module truck, there's a gin right there actually. And then they send the trucks down to pick up the modules and then they take them to the gin where they are stored until the ginning process starts. Uh, the gin, the gins have already started. They'll run well through November, October, just to get all this cotton in the area ginned. Um, and that's basically the whole process of the cotton from the picker to the accumulator to the bale once it's wrapped sitting in a module module truck picks it up hauls it to the gin where it is refined the seeds are taken out the birds are taken out all the junk is taken out of the cotton um, and then it is wrapped into smaller square bales where it is then loaded on a semi and then hauled to wherever it needs to go most of this cotton goes to either houston or san antonio where they have a further refinery process of making the cotton into what you wear in your clothes. So that is my short video of the day, probably six, seven minutes, not too long, but I just wanted to take the time to explain to you guys how a cotton picker works, uh, everything about it. And I hope it was kind of, kind of made sense. If you have any questions, please leave a comment. Um, I'm more than happy to make a second video explaining things that I might not have explained well before. But once again, thank you guys, and I'll see you in the next video.